Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. I'm your host, Joe Mishka. We're heading back to Salisbury, Maryland for day two of the Mount Hermon Plow Days. Last week we brought you day one where we tagged along on a field trip with about 650 school children and their teachers. Today we'll visit with some of the Teamsters plowing with their horses and mules and check out some of the artisan vendors on the grounds. As is the case with a lot of these kinds of events, the day started with the singing of the national anthem. Okay folks, as we gather around, we're about to start our opening exercise and we're glad to have you for our 15th annual plow day. Super good to have you. Looks like the crowd's coming in and doing well. And I believe the Lord's going to bless us with a good day. What do you think? Where we're going to begin and we have the national anthem sung by Miss Leslie Nelson. Leslie? Oh, This is his whole idea, and he spends a whole year working on it for these two days, from yesterday and today. And uh, he's still the fastest running man you'll ever meet. We're not going to need to spread these out, spend them down a little bit, and pick up everything, all right? And uh, we got a song for you that's actually about today's event. It's called uh, Gospel Cloud. It's got a chorus. We're going to sing later in the cloud. What? That's you, buddy. Ain't been to heaven, but I've been to 
toe. Streets up there are paved with gold. All right, on the prize. Oh, come, come on, man. Come. instrument that remains in the toolbox of human survival into the future. The mules are 15 and 16 year old Molly mules named Kit and Dolly. Are they related then? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, did you, you buy them uh, as young stock or? No, I bought them about two and a half years ago. Okay. I think the mules originally came out of Kentucky. Okay. And I All bought right. them from a fine lady out of Tennessee. And, uh, really set me up good. I'm proud of my team. You uh, you got many mules back home? Nope, just these two. What were you driving before these two? I was driving a team of Percherons. Percheron horses? Percheron mares, yes. Oh, okay. All right. You prefer mules to horses or it don't matter? It don't really matter. For what I'm doing here, I, I kind of prefer my mules. They're awful steady. They're awful steady, a little bit slower. Going on. Not everybody is good at using both, are they? Uh, well, I, mean, I don't mean to mention names, but. I don't it's... know. There's some that prefer horses over mules, and some vice versa, you know, rather have the mules. I really I like my girls. I'm proud of them. They do good for me. What do you do with them at home? We plow and do hay. We've got a sycamore that we do our hay with. Uh, around Christmas time, we do wagon rides for. Uh, different churches and other uh, charitable organizations, and mostly just plow. And that you're pretty involved with that North Carolina group, aren't you? Yes, the sir. Workhorse and North Carolina Workhorse and Association. Yes, sir. Yeah, no. it's um, a lot of these groups seem like they're um, kind of shrinking um, as some of the older members are kind of going away. So unfortunately, yes, some of the older ones are retiring or just getting out of it. But at the field day a few weeks ago, it looked like we had a lot of young people there. Had some, yes. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of tough on the young ones to get involved in it with the expense of everything now, the way it is. But uh, 
we try our best to, to urge them every chance we get. And I love my walking plow with the kids and uh, showing them you know, how it's done. And, and uh, they get a kick out of that. We enjoy that a lot. Really you also must enjoy every once in a while where you get a fellow that hasn't been plowing for 40 years, 50 years, and then you let him get behind Absolutely. the handles. Absolutely. It brings back a lot of memories for him. Yes, yeah, it does. It's That's got, cool. It's got to be fun for him. We enjoy coming up here. Mr. Oren and his crew is, is mighty good to us. Uh, fine bunch of people. Uh, we like coming up here. It's, it's a nice facility. The Lord's bless us with a beautiful day. So can't ask for no better. Horses are nice, mules are nice, working them is nice, but you also probably like the people a lot. Absolutely. One of the finest group of people I've ever been associated with, no doubt. Horse and mule people. Hands down. Yeah. Fine folks. Yes, yeah. sir. And that's one of the things I like about my business is uh, most everybody that I work with is horse and mule folk. Right. And they're about as honest as they come. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. Not rich, but, but just they'll give you everything they got. And, and even in the, the competition, we do the plowing competition, you know, and uh, we're competing against each other. But if we have problems, everybody will put down what they're doing and come over and try to help you beat them, if you know what I mean. I do know That's just, mean. just the kind of people they are. Right. You know. yeah. right. I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it. Do you have kids? Not at home. No. Okay. Got four grown and gone. So. And not into the horses or mules so much? Not at all. Okay. Not all right. at all. Grandkids? I got one little three-year-old granddaughter. Well, maybe she will. Maybe she will. I got see it like it skips generations sometimes. Yeah. She loves them to death, but she's not quite old enough to really get involved yet. But yeah, yeah. Got my yeah. fingers crossed. Okay. Right. Right. If you enjoy seeing how our ancestors lived during America's rule yesterday, you're going to love looking at these books. Volume 1 is Fieldwork, showing horses and vintage tractors preparing seedbeds, planting, cultivating, and harvesting the crop. Volume 2 shows the work being done in the barn and farmyard, feeding and watering the livestock, getting the crop into the barn, milking the cows, shearing the sheep, and collecting the eggs. In Volume 3, we go inside the home to see the family in the kitchen canning vegetables, in the parlor listening to the radio, and in the dining room for family supper. We also head into town to shop at the general store or visit on the town square on Saturday night. Each book has over 140 large format pages. They sell for $24.95 each, or you can buy two for $44.95, or all three for $54.95 plus shipping. Call 1-877-647-2452 to order. That's 1-877-647-2452. I've always been involved with the uh, horses and all like that. There was nothing right in this area that involved horses like this, but a, a few miles, oh, about 20 miles north of us, they had a thing called Fall Harvest at Pepper Box, and we'd go up and work in that, but then they, the guy had cancer and they quit it, so then that's when we started this. This is more than just a, a, a workhorse, a, a horsepower event. You're trying to do quite a bit here. Tell me what you're trying to do. 
Well, we're trying to take people back to how it used to be in farming. And as you've seen the latest things, I'm sure quilting and making butter and cooking with wood and that sort of thing. Uh, we, we cater to the kids as well. And, uh, you know, I think people ought to know how it used to be done. So we're just trying to do that. It takes a lot of, a lot of volunteers, a lot of willing hearts that just put themselves in it. I mean, I know some started way before light this morning. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good. My family's very much involved, which I'm pleased with. And uh, I I believe that, it would, I'm hope, sir, hoping it's gonna go on a long time after I'm gone. Roger, tell me about your horses. I got uh, Pete is on the left. Well, and I got Roger on the right. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Pete's on the right, Roger's on the left today. And uh, I didn't name him Roger after I was going to say, wow. Uh, <laughs> he was already dead. Uh, so my wife, when she starts yelling at me, I claim she's yelling at the horse and yeah, not me. Yeah, no doubt. So Except for when she gives the, praise, it's probably to you. I try to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Is uh, mostly what you do with them, this kind of thing, plow days? Plow, work them at home? This time of year and then um, towards the fall, we do a lot of plowing in the fall, but also we do a tremendous lot of uh, uh, festivals and things like this where we do a lot of wagon rides. And then at Christmas, um, I think the busiest, it slowed, of course, it slowed down during COVID and it picked up a lot this year. But I think the busiest I was ever being, I think from December the 1st one time to December the 24th, I was gone 22 nights, wow. 22 events. So we do a lot of Christmas caroling for churches, uh, candlelight tours and things like that. We just try to keep them busy, having fun. It's kind of an expensive hobby, isn't it? Well, it is, but... I have had other hobbies, and all hobbies are. It yes, <laughs> depends sir. on what you put into them. Yeah, I reckon it's cheaper than having a yacht out on the ocean. That's or something. the way I tell my wife. That's yeah, yeah. the way I look at it. Uh, it's cheaper than having a yacht. You had horses your whole life? Um, I did growing up, and then I got away from them, got work, you know, got in the way. I got just kind of got away from horses for a while. And then. Uh, Finally got back into it. I told I was I said I just want an old just an old plug horse to do some to ride on Sunday afternoon the carriage and so that Christmas my son and my brother youngest brother they were gonna play a joke on me and um, they bought me a, a donkey and I got me a harness and uh, got me a harness and started driving that donkey again and they thought I was gonna carry it back in the next day. But I kept it, started driving it again, and kind of got back into it. That's been about 20 years ago that I uh, started back driving horses. So, so it kind of got back into it in an odd way. Yeah, but right. I enjoyed it. Right. They didn't know that you were going to take it seriously. No, they, they thought it was going to just be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Thank you, sir. Thank it's you. Good to see Thank you. you for coming. We had four teams come from North Carolina, and that's expensive with a big price of diesel fuel. The bridge tunnel cost them $24 each way. And of course, it's about three days out of their work schedule. And, uh, you know, they've, they've helped us two days here and it takes a day at least. And if they take their time, it'll take two days to go, go and go. So yeah, I'm very, they're my friends and I've made them made friends just by this kind of, I've been to their plowing and uh, you know, you know, birds, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> we don't charge anything to get in. The only thing, people come here, if they spend any money, it's got to be for food. And we don't have a part of that. Now they share some of that with us, but uh, yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, I like it. I got son and grandsons that are involved in it so i hope it'll go on and on after i'm gone this program is available for purchase to order your copy please call 319-362-3027
or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.